Well, long overdue, man. This 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 whole get together right here. This is long overdue. It's like what two years in the making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that sounds about right. 2019, yeah. Uh huh. My God, this is yeah. this is something that's uh, we've been talking about doing for some time, and it just, I guess now ne- never lined up. Never lined up, and now it's lined up. Like we, he, I like, I, I came employee preview night. Comes up to me, goes, "When are we doing a podcast?" And I'm like, "Bro, I'm ready. Let's go." <laughs> Yeah, because I'm sitting here like, because I think you guys tried to get me on last year, I think. Yeah. And we just, the schedule's never lined up or anything. Never lined up. By the way, uh, we've been recording this entire time. I just like going in natural. You know what I mean? It's it's like, it just makes everybody feel comfortable. I mean, it's yeah. a lot of fun. But uh, virus, I mean, it, it's, 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 this is something that, um, <laughs> We we've been excited for all week, and I know you've been excited for it probably all season. I mean, we've this is yeah. long overdue for both for both of us, all of us, and and I'm just so happy that we're doing this now. Like, you don't understand. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's an absolute dream for me because you are one of my favorite characters on Ghost yeah. Town, and someone I look forward to seeing uh, uh-huh. because not only are you funny. Uh, but you have some of the best scares and the best talking to the customer that I've seen. The the things you can get a customer to do just because they're intimidated and scared <laughs> is unreal. I think my top moment of all time with you will always be 2019 when you got someone to go into that pen that's right over there oh, by the horse okay. stables. Okay, here's the thing. You can think Chopper for that one. You can think Chopper for that one because the story behind it was – this girl, she was just she was just being hysterical. And Chopper looks at me and is just like, the corral? The corral. And we just get her going and somehow a bunch of other people to the corral. But my favorite, and I think this is part of the reason why they now lock it. One of my favorite stories um, that I, one of the things I did was it got really foggy in Kmart. And I opened up the corral and then just enough fog was in the area where I'm like, okay, all traffic got to go that way. All traffic got to go that way. And I kind of shuffled, probably, we probably got about a group of, I don't know, about 10 into that corral. And then we just closed it and I walked away. (laughs) Oh my God. I mean, these, it's like moments like these, we would just sit there and just laugh. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, just yelling at people and, and just seeing you charge toward them with your saw, and it, it's just so funny to see that. I can I can hear if I if I'm coming in those gates like a little late after the the entry has started and everything, I can hear you from the freaking other side of Ghost Town. Scream. Okay, so interesting story, and I was told this this year. Um, one of my friends, he comes to the buffet every single year. He actually would show up like probably once or twice a week and i was um i'm doing my bit and everything you guys need to come to the buffet so trust me i i we've come the times we listen and i tell i told you this every time i saw you leading the you were my highest viewed video on tiktok because of your list in the buffet <laughs> i think it's something so- that, like sixteen thousand views Oh my god. Um, so my friend, he was he was at buffet check-in, like probably actually by that fire pit. Right. So apparently he was sitting over there and he heard me while I was in the restaurant. That's like, <laughs> for those who don't know, if you don't know the fire pit area, the fire pit is like right in front of Ghost Rider. So that's like Ghost Rider going past that a line of people in Ghost Rider, and then the restaurant across that. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, yeah, that's 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 impressive right there. If if he can hear you from all that noise right there, I mean, yeah, that is impressive. And I, I was just like, no, no, you can't. He's like, no, I could. <laughs> and then Chopper's like, yeah, you are a little loud. <laughs> how long? How long have you been doing the buffet for? Because you're so well in there the way that you can talk to the customers and develop like a character there and then bring a slightly scarier character out into the streets um i got shanghai into that um 
Once again, thanks to Chopper. Um, <laughs> I got Shanghai into doing the buffet probably around oh seven, oh eight at latest. And it was, and it was just kind of one of those things of, hey, you feel like coming and do this with us? Sure. What is it? Oh, it's the buffet. Uh, okay. Just walking right in. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm here. What do I do? And since then, I got to see what Beast and Chopper were doing. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's all improv. Like, it's full-on improv. That, okay, so you brought up the list. There's there's a, there's a an interesting story behind that. So you know how, because you guys have been and you guys are looking around, if you've ever looked at other people at the table or other tables, you'll see people just on their phone. Yeah. And they're just like. Every time, like, it's just today, the day and age now, everyone's just on their phone, like Facebook, anything, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. And so. I went around to the table and this kid had, I, I say kid, but they're like a teenager. They're sitting there, they're on their phone. I think they were either going through Instagram or Facebook. And I was just like, get off your phone. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, you have food in front of you. You should be eating. You're at a buffet for crying out loud. And I think originally I was like, get off Instagram. And they're like, I'm not on Instagram. I'm on such and such. And I was like, well, then get off that too. And as time went on, it kind of became, I need to keep track of all these all these apps and whatnot people are on, even if they're not on it. And that was how the list got started. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, that list. I'm trying to think, did you guys record my first version of the list or the second version? I, I, I couldn't tell you. So this is how I found out about the list. Um... My friends over at Real Family Adventures uh -huh. they filmed the video on I think that for their story that day or uploaded it to Instagram and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta try that because we had a friend coming out visiting from uh, Florida, so we wanted to try to give him like the best experience, and so that's why you were perfect when you came around. I'm like, you know, virus, I think he needs the list, and I was like, all right, this is I gotta film this because this was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> That's how I found out about it. And I was like, I got to hear this in person. Like, I got to see if he actually carries around or if this was just a one-time thing. No, it was for the entire run. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this year, I think I lost the original. Okay, this year I had version A and version B. Version A was the one I carried over from last year. Somewhere along the season, I lost it. Oh, no. So I was just like, all right, well, I pulled into the parking lot early, opened up my phone. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And I hand wrote the entire front page. Oh then that week, it was just like, well, you didn't mention this. And I was like, oh, break out the pencil, add it on. <laughs> so the second, So the second page is all stuff people added to it. Huh. Rob added like even I remember when Rob was like talking to him about some stuff he was like oh I gotta add that one too like it was just funny to hear like all the things like especially when he went as far back as to say lime wire I was like yeah whoa that took me back a lot right there <laughs> just hearing yeah. that one no I, I I go I go as far back as Live Journal yep um what is it Live Journal MySpace Friendster freaking AOL yeah I go I go that far back with it it's so hilarious like it works it's just it's so freaking funny to see what you would come up with in buffet like every single night we would go because i was like okay mm -hmm. gotta get the virus room and like we were fortunate enough to get you every single time we went yeah yeah it's it's just so funny because it became it became kind of one of those things where this season we weren't sure if we were going to be allowed to do the buffet mm -hmm. because as you guys saw we had other other people there depending on when you went and if that crew had enough people um originally their plan was to have a set of people and their shift was just going to be the buffet that's it oh no yeah and i guess they probably didn't get enough offers well they sent out all the offers but they probably didn't get enough yes we'll we'll accept so then they're like okay well what can we do how can we how can we improve this and so they tied them to scare force and so 
that made their shift like a full eight, possibly even longer by what one of them told me. Um, and she had said, oh, and then it was just one of those things was like, okay, well, we've gotten that far. Mm, we probably should not have them as um, scare force. And so what they did instead was they're like, okay, you guys are going to fill in spots for the two new mazes. Which, kind of a smart thing to do. Tie in, do a tie in to the new, um, to the yeah, to the two new mazes. So you had people either dressed in grimoire attire or bloodline attire. I think I remember seeing some bloodline people. I, I remember that one for a fact because they mm -hmm. mentioned it. Like yeah. Mentioned that. yeah, yeah, one or two of them. One or two, um, the way it worked because you have three locations. Right. Um, they, I think they sent most of most of that whole buffet crew to the hotel. Oh, and then they brought um, two or three of us over to chicken dinner, who used to do it in the past. And then us at Spurs was like, "Yeah, we got this." Yep. <laughs> yeah, you guys were holding down Spurs. You guys were a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> well, there was there was one night where they only had four buffet kids. So they sent them all to the hotel, and they were like, "Yeah, you guys, you guys got to go to your locations." So me, Chopper, and Echo went to Spurs. Bobbins and Oingo joined us a little later, but for me, I walked in this walked into Spurs, and I'm like, "I'm the only one here." Oh no! <laughs> oh, this is going to be weird. So I'm kind of going in table to table, doing my thing, and I'm just like, "Oh, this is tiring." Chopper, get in here soon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Hey, dude, so you, like Sammy said, you guys are forced to be reckoned with with the buffet. It's 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 just something like you might choke on your food if you were in the same room with these guys. <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of laughing, and you're gonna like just. It, it's just hard to explain in person. You got it. I mean, you got to see it in person. Like that's that's the only way. I um I, I I gotta tell you guys about this this one guy we had on the final weekend. Oh, I'm excited for this. I'm I'm actually I wanna know did he and his significant other survive? Mainly did he survive? <laughs> Jeez. So they they had them in the back room, not not the grill portion, but like that back room after the hallway. So they're in there and Originally, guy had no problems with me, Chopper, Echo, whatever. And then Oingo and Bobbins came in. And he just so happened to, I just, he happens to be an earshot of me hearing, yeah, I don't like clowns. Oh, no. Oh, no. He, oh, why? Oh. Yeah. So Echo Bobbins. And Oingo and I are getting ready to walk in, back into the front room. And I'm like, wait a minute. You two. You see the guy over there kind of like looking a little suspicious? And her like, yeah. And it's like, go say hi to that table. As I'm walking down the hall, all of a sudden I hear, ah! <laughs> <laughs> And then like, later... Later, I walk in and he is just cowering oh, behind no. his significant other. And I was just like, oh, he's so broken. Oh, let's no. let's let's see how broken he is. Okay, their table. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go off the front room because you guys were usually in the front room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Their table, so you have the wall with all the pictures, and then you have the next row. They'd be in the next row. Now, distance-wise, they would be at the patio door, and I'd be at the I'd be at that wall. Right. That's the distance, and I'm just yelling. 
Oh, by the way, for everyone who is watching, I yell in the buffet a lot. <laughs> if you actually, can't tell. That was actually one of the comments in the TikTok. Like, Why is he so loud? Why does he yell? That's, <laughs> that's his thing. Like, he just does it. It's hilarious. I was not yelling in that video. You know what's funny, too, on that TikTok was, think. was the fact that people actually think you're being serious when you're telling them. You know how many really? comments I've had? Like, is he serious? He can't tell people that. I'm like, it's a joke. It's a it's, joke. It's, it's like, you think really anyone's going to stop going off their phone? If anything, they're going to start recording. Right. <laughs> and part of, and well, here's the thing. It's a 50-50. It's, it's a bit of a joke. But for the younger crowd, I am being a little bit serious because I... There are times, and you'd be shocked. I think it was on the final night. We had a girl who just sat in a buffet, didn't want any food. Yeah. That was a waste of $50. That's $45. Yeah. Gone. 50 and some, exactly. Exactly. That's a waste of 50 and, bucks. and that's the reason why I'm always just like, go. I'm always yelling at people, go get food, go get dessert, eat. Yeah. <laughs> because you were at a buffet. And yeah, we have. Um, I think I think the girl did get up and just probably got like a small dollop of mashed potatoes. That's it. I yeah. Pissed if I bought her ticket, be like, really? You didn't eat and, nothing. And here's the thing. I even I was like, who does this one belong to? And it's like, Dad's over there, and Dad came walking up, and I look at Dad, and I'm just like, Sir, you do realize this? Actually, no. At this time, she hadn't eaten yet. She was like, I'm not hungry. And I was like, sir, you do realize that this one's not eating, and you paid, what, $45, $50 for this? And he actually thought about it. He was like, he's right. Go eat. He's right. Go eat. <laughs> and then the – but and part, of, and part of the joke with the list is because the, they'll be on their phone. Food's just sitting there. Getting and cold. so, Yeah. And it's good food. It's very good. It food. is really good food. <laughs> so I usually am like – I, I kind of turned into that 1950s house mother, if you really think about it. It works. And it's just like, I've, I've had several parents even do it. They're just like, they listen to the whole list, and then they think about it, and then they look at their child, and they're like, you know, the monster's right. You should be eating. Get off your phone. <laughs> and that's really kind of how that whole joke started. Truth though, you see it a lot these days, and it's like, uh, come on, dude, enjoy. It. You're, you're not only are you having plates of food that is really good, but you're being entertained. You mm -hmm. I mean? It's like enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy like this is just a preview of what you're gonna get once the event actually starts. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, um, this is like the time to actually get the photos out of the way now because you're not gonna be able to do it later. Mm -hmm. Get your photos, get your nice little appetizer to the event. Uh, because they're on they're on nice mode right now. Once 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 it hits seven, it is no longer nice mode out there. Yeah, we've we've literally gone through, and we've had some people who's like, "You guys are mean," or some people are like, "You guys aren't scary." And I'm like, and when I hear it, I just look at them like, "Oh, wait till I'm out there." Right now, I'm being nice. <laughs> and they're just like, "Oh," but it is. You're right. It is a test to see how it's going to be later because like the guy I was talking about i'm just yelling at him you should have dessert we and i started list, listing off the desserts and he's cowering <laughs> um he gets up eventually they get up and walk down the hall and i follow and i'm just walking like gingerly <laughs> and, <laughs> and all of a sudden um he books it like literally full-on sprint through the hallway, through the front room, and out the door. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. His boyfriend kind of walks up and just, like, kind of falls him out, and I'm just like... I, I, I go to Echo, and I'm like, he literally just ran. <laughs> oh, he's nothing. in for a long... Uh -huh. He ran. <laughs> I did nothing, and he ran. I was like, he's in for a long night. I really want to know how long he made it, because... That's what I want to know. <laughs> because if he made his way to Boardwalk... If he made his way to Boardwalk, that was his death. I yep. can promise you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> I mean, listen, uh, that is chaos. That's all I could say. <laughs> in, the, in the most 
nicest fun way, man. I mean, it, that's that's what that's what virus is, and virus really brings that helps bring that atmosphere to life for Georgetown. Town. Um, tell us a little bit about for you how it all started, though, man. For those who don't know, how did this really uh, stick with you, and how did what made you want to do all this? Um, so I had originally was supposed to go to Scary Farm itself in '95 with my neighbors across the street. Um, they didn't, something happened where I wasn't able to go or they forgot to buy my ticket. So I didn't go that year. So I was like, okay, bummed out. 2000 rolls around me and a bunch of high school friends are like, all right, we're going to go to scary farm. Um, I didn't get sick, sick, but my asthma was bothering me. And so I'm like, I am going to go because I've been wanting to go. So we go through, I get, I go through uh, camp. My first scare zone ever walking through was camp nice. back when it was um, the gauntlet. Nice. Um, went through Lore of the Vampire, no, Gothic Graveyard. And then went through the underground. Wasn't feeling great, but was still having fun. My friends went through C3 and then we saw the hanging. And then we just kind of meandered through Ghost Town. I don't remember much after that. <laughs> the following year, I'm working at Disney. Um, one of my friends, who just so happens to be a ghost town street monster, was just like, was working with me in the entertainment department at Disney and brought up, oh, yeah, they're going to be hiring in a few weeks. They we were like, oh, really? So she was like, yeah, you two should come along. And so Esrin, rest in peace, um, me and Esrin were working together, and we went down to Knott's, applied, and that was where we met, uh, that was where we met Chase. And not sequel, because <laughs> there's two of them. Right. Two. Uh-huh. So um, we all met up down, that's where we met Chase. We all interviewed together, and I'm in the chair, and I'm just like, and they're like, all right, so um, welcome to welcome to Not Scary Farm, welcome to Halloween Haunt, because back then it was Halloween Haunt. Haunt. Yep. Yeah. They were just like, okay, where do you want to be? And I'm just like, uh, deer in headlights, because I didn't know what they had. I was like, I don't know, I don't know the mazes, I don't, I, I don't know. So first thing come to mind, do you guys have any makeup spots available? <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, unfortunately, all of our in mid sense she stops and was like, wait a minute. We could use an African American. I was typecasted. <laughs> oh no. I was typecasted into being the voodoo priest of Blood Bayou. Wow. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so I did I did that role for three years. Um, so 2001, 02, 03, originally in 03, they had said that, um, that was going to be its final year. So I was like, okay, cool. I can probably actually move out in the streets at this point. Cause at this point I had gotten to know people <laughs> and they had, um, also I nearly got fired <laughs> uh <-oh>. that <laughs> same year. <laughs> that was a sure sign of, yeah, I need to get out of mazes now. <laughs> <laughs> My my biggest problem I had was staying in my room. Okay. I didn't know I didn't know how to do that. I was really bad at it. Except for those yeah. last seven days. You're like, fuck it. Yeah, okay. those last seven days was just like I will be put to death if I do not comply. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I will I will do this. I will stay in my room for the last seven days. Um, where I had to, I had some I had some great times in there with um okay so now I'm gonna go through my list of people I remember back when I was working with um Slither from Ghost Town we worked together uh the bride we worked together in Blood Bayou um ooh, who's still around designer Gus okay um Oh wow, there really aren't many of us left. Uh huh. There there really isn't too many of us that are still around. 
there's a few others that I can't really think of off the top of my head though. Um, but in 04, I was just like, okay, I got to try and go to streets at least. So I get there, I go to rehire and they're like, I was like, okay, can I talk to Craig? Cause Craig was in charge of street talent at the time. And I was just like, can I, can I talk to Craig? I want to see about getting on on streets. Sure. Come on up. I talked to Craig and he just looks at me. He's like, so you're ready to be out, huh? He's like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, where do you want to go? I was just like, uh, and at this point in time, um, I had a lot of friends in camp who were like, come to camp, come to camp. And I wasn't even sure if I was ready for that. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm ready for camp yet though. Um, so I told so but Craig was just like, so you want ghost town, right? And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that yet. <laughs> Um, but I was like, do you have any spots in camp or swamp? And he just thought about it. He was like, I have a spot in the swamp. So he put me in the swamp for 04 oh, on its closing season. Nice. Oh. Yeah. It's actually the one street zone. It's the one street zone I do not have a jersey for. Really? Oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah. So I was just like, okay. So I did the swamp for its closing year. Um, went And all of us from the swamp got brought over and grandfathered into Silver Bullet. Okay. on its on its initial year and then that following year i was just like in, which is 06 i was like i think i'm ready to go to ghost town go to craig i'm like all right i want to go to ghost town and it was like i was going to try and bribe you with the makeup with the silver bullet werewolf makeup spot so you could stay in silver bullet <laughs> i turned it down oh yeah oh. <laughs> yeah i turned it down because there's there's a few things, and after after being in prosthetics now, I'm actually glad I did turn it down. Because <laughs> if you've seen the prosthetic, you know the snout's pretty long, right. and it's pretty thick, and it's from what I've heard, it's kind of heavy. And I'm just like, nah, I don't want, uh, no, I don't want to wear that one. Part of that, nope. Uh, like it's like I need to eat. <laughs> yeah, and, and over. <laughs> yeah over the years you actually learn how to eat in a prosthetic yep. you find ways or you just don't eat at all so um, do i try to eat during lunch or do i just savor it until the end so i can chow down after work exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> so i got i moved to ghost town in 06 06 07 08 i'm in a mask um if you go to my Instagram, you might see this weird looking. Um, if I have the teeth in, it looks like I, I look like a piranha as I as I describe it. But it has like these really hard arches, and then a very just kind of like kind of face. Right. Uh huh. Um, I sculpted that mask. Really? Oh. Yeah, I went to Eric Lubati, and being one of his first customers of that season or when he started gaining traction he was like yeah did the life cast and then i got to sculpt it myself awesome um which i still have i have the whole thing i have my life cast i have that particular sculpt um so i did that out in ghost town and probably around oh i'm gonna say oh eight is when i started thinking about it i wanted to start finding try and figure something out for myself as a character, as a very defined character. Right. Because back in the day, you were like, I am Ghost Town Gruesome number 27. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what it was. It's like you were Ghost Town Gruesome this, you were a saloon girl, or you were a werewolf. No, nothing else. <laughs> There's nothing else. So they finally... Um, so uh, that was the year I finally got makeup in 09. And then from 09 to present, I have now had three prosthetics, three different prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, what a journey. What a journey <laughs> for real. Like going from maze to, to zone and whatnot. That's wow. What a journey indeed, man. What's been your favorite part all of? Scaring in Ghost Town everywhere. Like, what's been the absolute most fun you've had? Uh, just getting to know everybody, like the friends, you, the friends you make over the seasons. Yeah, yeah. Because crazy thing is, this season 
I met up with someone I named probably about 10 years ago, and they haven't worked <laughs> the event in over 10 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we reunited this this season. I was just, um, I came backstage, and they were like, "Yeah, someone's someone someone in the in the group was just like, someone's looking for you," um, and they couldn't <laughs> describe them, but they were like, "You know them." And I'm like, "Oh, uh, okay." You know them. <laughs> yeah, they were like, they asked for you by name and said you named them, and I was just like, "Okay, I've only named very few people, so that narrows it down." And I was just like. Okay, it could be one or two people that I'm thinking of, but I'm not sure who. Eventually, I did run into them, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I know who I, it was who I thought it was. Oh, wow. Man. So, yeah. Ain't that something, though? It's always something special. You get to reunite and see old friends, and you never know who you're going to run into, who's going to show up as a guest at one night. Someone, it could be someone you haven't seen since high school. Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's insane to think that, especially, like, every year you got new people coming to the event as well, like, who are interested in doing it. You got your mm-hmm. diehard fans coming back who are there to like to support everyone and take photography and everything. So, I mean, mm-hmm. talk about photographers and, and, and videographers. Like, man, how many of these photos of yourself have you seen out there? I mean, because a lot there's a lot of talented photography out there. There's a lot of talented videographers out there, artists. Like, how many how many of your own stuff have you seen out there? Um, a lot of stuff just gets sent to me. Yeah. Because I actually, it's funny, I don't actually go out looking for it. Um, there's been times where photographers have taken pictures of me and I didn't even know it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm, old. yeah, I'm doing my thing. Yeah. And it's just like, I see a photo pops up and I'm like, who took this? When was this taken? I go through, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I like that. That's awesome. Um, my favorite one was the TikTok, though. Good Lord. I, I had about six people send, um, what was it, Theme Park Duo. Theme Park Duo got a clip of me scaring somebody. And it was it's on TikTok. And all of a sudden, I had like six people send it to me. And I'm just like, okay, I, yeah, uh, how, do, how do I handle this? Yeah. And I eventually was just like, okay, let me let me save the video. Let me put it up on Facebook. And just so people know, yes, I have the message. Yes, I know. I, message has been received. Yes, I know. <laughs> so people get so excited to see to what they want to send it to you, man. <laughs> I, yeah. But I'm like, okay, I got it. Everyone sent it to me. Times, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I think the 17th time was the one that got you, though. Uh, yeah. I was like, I'm like, okay, let me just put this up on Facebook and so people know. I was like, yes, I am aware. It is a thing. <laughs> it exists. So if my if my math is correct, uh, that means you've done over 15 seasons now at uh, Ghost Town Streets. Mm-hmm. Um, what has been, like, the biggest change since when you first started on Ghost Town to where it is now? Um, I would say the sheer amount of individualized characters. Like, that has grown tremendously. Um, Because originally it was all just, all of us were just a bunch of townsfolk, just kind of meandering around. Now you have, like, you have a barber, you have a gargoyle, you have the doctor, who now has a nurse. Um, Yeah. (laughs) There's a nurse yeah, now. Yeah. Um, you've got, if you just got this whole plethora of characters out and about, and storylines tie and twist and turn. It's almost like a comic book universe. You know what I mean? Yes, and it's and it's also sort of creeping into normal knots yeah. as well now. Because yeah. if you if you've gone to um, Ghost Town Alive this past season. They started incorporating some haunt stuff in there too now. Yeah, yeah, I seen that the Sarah Marshall things and whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah, and even even the even the uh, the great towns people of uh, of Calico are even uh, going along with it, and they know, uh-huh. they know some stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's really cool that it's really interactive year round. I agree. Uh, speaking of, of of a love letter to Knott's, um, Origins was there. 
Um, and obviously that ties into Ghost Town. How was it for you, obviously spending a lot of time in Ghost Town, going through Origins and seeing that story? It was, it was amazing. Cause like the first time I walked through it, um, I actually also got to walk with um, with Ted, who's oh, yeah, Ted Doherty. Uh huh. Um, because he had described to us, oddly enough, if Ted had continued working, me and him are at the same um, would be in the same amount of time frame of working that haunt. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, we started the same year. Nice, that's cool. Um, we um, but he he told us he was like, yeah, the hanging just had the idea is the hanging just happened, and she just disappeared, and now the town is slow the curse is slowly falling on the town yeah. i was just like okay and as we're walking through the moment you get outside i think it's the once you get outside the funeral scene right. yeah and you hit that that was i think the first year they did it it was actual rain yeah and my mind was just blown it was just like oh my god it's raining yep. and i'm like we're not even outside but we're outside right. in a rainstorm I was like, man, Disney, you got a little competition. Uh huh. Right there. Did you guys notice that this season they didn't have the rain effect? Yeah. Yeah, they just. I, yeah. What I was paying attention to more now was the fact that, um, because we took the behind the fog tour and that was one of the majors we went in. Oh. And I was paying attention more to the projections in the back. Like I've always noticed them, but I was actually paying attention to what characters it was and stuff. So that was pretty cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like a freaking Easter egg galore in there. It really is. Like it's every corner you turn, it's like boom, Easter egg, Easter egg, Easter egg. Uh huh. Um, I had a friend who took that tour, and actually, I think it's it's on somewhere in the maze. They have a paper with a list of the charges. Yes. It's yeah, it's in the be- it's in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, in- you walk past the when the judge is up there yelling at you when you turn that uh-huh. corner. There's that wall right there, and on that the, there's a table right there, and on the table is the is all the list of all the chargers. Okay, I didn't know that until my friend took that tour. Yeah, it, I didn't either. Was, yeah, there was a lot of things we didn't know after <laughs> until taking that tour, and I was like, this is they better bring this back, especially for next year, because I mean, this mm-hmm. next year is a year to capitalize on it. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, especially with like all the the history of the fiftieth and whatnot, and I mean, there's a lot of things coming that sound. Cool. I mean, rumored at least. I mean, Ooh. It, it ain't official until not says it. So I ain't even. I'm not true. I'm not holding my breath on it. But if you know, it's always okay. good to be excited about it. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. So I hear. Oh, I, I go in the Reddit chat sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll believe it. And when Nas announces it, I'm not gonna say anything until then. So I know that vibe. <laughs> I keep it to myself. You know, you gotta keep I. It to I, I know that vibe very well. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, Disney's doing this. Are they though? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, who knows? Only time will tell, right? You know, it's, 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 right? That's what I would say is if, freaking, if I was working at Disney, I'd be like, hey, you know, time will tell, so we'll find out. Yeah. Um, you know, 2019 going into it for us when we first like started really going to knots on a weekly basis. I mean, just seeing everybody was one of the best things that we got to do every single weekend, just chilling on our bench, just, you know, watching everyone work and, and, and whatnot. And that's when we were really introduced to you. And, and I even remember, and this happened 2019 and 2021, you pulling your own hair out of your, your head uh, that was pulled onto you and giving it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think he just pulled off his own hair and gave it to me, like – and we're like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah, 20, 2019 I started that. I ooh, what makeup artist did I have? My makeup artist that year, for some I don't know how we came about it, but I know I went and grabbed some hair. I bought some hair and I was just like, Yeah, let's see if we can do this. And it was like, okay. And so just glued it and glued it onto my head and i just went walking around and that was i think i also brought it up to hostel i told him <laughs> like you can rip out the hair he's like okay <laughs> i just got really big on that one yeah, and then i t- 
Uh huh. And then I told um, I told AJ, I'm like, you're the barber. Give me a haircut when you're out there at some point. <laughs> have fun with it. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I do. I'm like, have fun with it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> he he. I I heard on it was either your guys's podcast with him or or um or Hostel's podcast where he was just like. I hope I'm not hurting you as he was cutting the hair. Cause I think, I think that happened to be the final night. And I had like so much hair left that I went back after lunch to actually glue on a bunch more hair. (laughs) And so when, when um, AJ was cutting it, he was cutting the long set of hair. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> so he's pulling, and I'm just selling it. I'm screaming like like crazy as if I'm in pain. And he's just, and he was just like, oh, my God, I hope this doesn't hurt. And I'm sitting up here, and I'm just screaming, and I'm just like, dude, pull, pull. <laughs> in my head, I'm just like, just rip, just pull. I don't care. So you're scared trying to do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm just like, at the same time, it's like. And I'm just scared. I'm just like, just. And I'm just screaming and, and mentally, I'm like, just pull, just pull, pull just keep going, hair. pull the hair. I, I wouldn't have done that. I'm, I hate being pulled. I I had like blood drawn this week and I had a bandaid and it was uh, in a sensitive area and pulling down oh. was like, no, no fun. I was like, ah, what do we do? Hospital use those freaking really sticky band-aids too. Oh, oof. Yeah. Speaking about the hair, I found out um, there's there's one person in particular who hates the hair. Like, anytime I'm around and I start doing this, they're just like, oh, God, stop, please. <laughs> uh, Miko. Really? Uh, yeah, he hates it. <laughs> now you know what you got to do every year. Oh, I do. Yeah, every I, year. Uh, um, there was there was one night he left his box open, oh. and, <laughs> and I just took some hair and I rolled it up and I just set it in there and and he had his box inside the tent and I usually have mine on the outside. All of a sudden I hear, "Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> no!" And I was just I was just off to the side cackling. You're like, this is great. Uh huh. I, yeah, no. I mean, the, the that's another thing. How how fun is it to like get out there and try to, especially with your character? How fun is it for you to try to make other people break? Oh, it's a <laughs> okay. It's a lot of fun, and it's actually I don't try to break people intentionally, like my fellow monsters. I try not to break them intentionally. <laughs> if it happens, it just kind of happens. Um. So as you just know, it rained this season. It did. Yes. We were there. Um I went a little out there mentally with it, and I'm just walking around just telling everybody we're gonna drown. <laughs> I'm walking around like we're gonna drown, 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 we're gonna drown. <laughs> and on at this particular night, I was walking with the nurse and the teacher. And I kind of turned into a Looney Tune at this point, and I'm just walking around like we're gonna drown, we're gonna drown, we're gonna drown. Like, it. Um, both of them kind of looked at me like, "Is he okay?" <laughs> and, and it was just like, "Yeah, he's just having a nervous breakdown. That's all." <laughs> we all have them. Yeah, their raining night was fun. It sucked being wet. Um. But like when when the rain subsided, it was wild out there. Oh, mm. So as a guest, I was having a great time. Yeah, because you all were on some different energy that night. Oh yeah, we were. Oh yes, we were. Like at one point, like was it the then you guys did you guys go both nights it rained, or the we, first? We went to Saturday where it rained. It was, the was that the October. was that the thunderstorm day? Yeah. Okay, that was the night we got pulled twice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I'm used to being out in the rain. Okay, cool. Scare in the rain. You just can't you can't scare. You just gotta be creepy and present. Yeah. Um for that one, because we actually had the thunder and lightning storm above us. You know, like 
go in the back. And we're like, oh, okay. We're going to go hide, wet and cold, in the wind, slightly shivering, and just waiting to get the oak all clear. Yep. And like, five minutes later, all right, go back out. Okay. <laughs> we all go back out. We do our thing. Within an hour. All right, get back in. <laughs> like, the the best part for me was... I was, I was, I, at this point, I had a lot of energy. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to terrorize somebody. This is going to be great. It's pouring rain. And then I may, I come down Fog Alley, make a right at the windmill going, going to Kmart. And all of a sudden I hear virus. And I'm like, that's management. Am I in trouble? (laughs) I turn around and then he's like, go to the back. We're cutting you guys for the, for, for the moment. Oh again okay and he's like tell other people all right i get back there and then at this point i'm just like i'm sopping wet luckily i have i have good reliable shoes there you go That's so important. my my feet aren't going squish because <laughs> yeah. that's that is like the where I, I don't like it worst. It's I don't like worst. it. I hate it so much. I was hating it when I was there. I was like, my socks are wet. I don't like this one bit. Mm-hmm. I hate it. That's why I always get some tactical boots. Smart. Ah. Yeah, tactical boots. My feet stay nice and dry. Smart. Um, I don't know if anyone's posted them, be- but some some photos got p- taken while we were backstage in the rain. Because we got a little crazy and bored because at the second time they pulled us was the long time. <laughs> so we're all sitting there just like, okay, we need something to do. We got to entertain ourselves. So I know someone got wrapped up in a trash bag and started wandering around all crouched like a California raisin. <laughs> um, yeah. Just why not? random stupid stuff. Hey, why not? Because we're bored. Exactly. <laughs> You gotta get rid of that energy somehow, especially because people are amped up on that C4 and other energy beverages. Oh God! <laughs> surprisingly, surprisingly, um, the only only energy drink I'll actually do will be like Red Line, but even then, it'll be like a quick swallow, and that's it. Get you just something to kind of. Boosted you up real quick, and like a shot. Yeah, like it's like a shot real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A quick energy shot. That's it. I don't really drink energy. I don't really drink energy drinks. I'm a Zoa fan. The Zoa's good. The Rocks drink. Mm, I haven't heard of that one. That one's good. It's like all like supposed to be all natural and stuff like natural caffeine and all that. I've been drinking a lot of it lately. It's actually pretty good. It's, it's helped me a lot. Nice. <laughs> Especially like the last like couple hours of work where I actually got to really like work hard. I'm just like Zoa. Hmm. <laughs> I know that feeling, yeah. considering right now we're getting ready for Christmas. Christmas season, man. And, and the Christmas parade, we're doing rehearsals right now at Disney. Ooh. So my, my current schedule, I would be clocking in in about 30 minutes. Ooh. And we'd go until 4 a.m. in the morning. Where it's like freaking 40 degrees at night right now. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Nice and cold. Yeah. Oh man, I've been I've been bundled these past few days. Like, yep. Straight hydro flash, just hot water, just to freaking sip on. <laughs> I just stumbled upon something. Huh? Yes, you just gave me an idea. Hydro flash, <laughs> hot water. Yes. There you go. Stay hydrated. Stay, Stay hydrated. actually hi- yeah. hydro flask, um, hot water and tea. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice tee. Mm-hmm. Nice tea. Nice tea. And it'll stay hot for the majority of the night. Boom. Yeah. It's nice. You can have that one. Take it. You Thank it. you. You're going to need that Thank for you. That 40 degree weather. I am. Oh, I am. Dude. One question I, I, I think I have, and, and, and maybe some audience members will have as well, is obviously you've been doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, what has like, kept you going and kept you energized uh, <laughs> to keep coming back year after year? Um,. Originally, it was just, hmm. originally, it just kind of was that, oh, it's that time of year. Okay, cool. Oh, I get to meet up with so-and-so and so-and-so. Okay, cool. And it just kind of kind of snowballed. And then I would say by my 
15, eh, by my 10th or 15th year, that was when I started doing, okay, I need to start figuring out when I'm going to actually stop. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I definitely want to make it to my 20th, which I've already done. And I was like, I made it to my 20th because this past season was 21. Yeah. Um, I think it was the, it might have been in 2019 where I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the 50th. And that'll be, so I, I think for, I, and I, I, I think this holds true for a lot of other people who've done the event and are still doing the event is going out on an anniversary year of your anniversary year or the event anniversary year. Right. That's what's, that's what I know has been getting a lot of people going. Cause if you really think about it, you've seen some characters there for, for some years and then all of a sudden they're gone. So like um, uh, Frame, he was there. I think he wanted to hit five years, which he did, if I remember that correctly. He had his fifth year and it was like, okay, we're calling it. So that whole crew, they're like, all right, we want to hit this this year, this year and call it there. Right. So I would say for me, it was just like the the miles the milestone markers. I was like, I want to, I want to hit a milestone marker, and every so often it was just like, okay, I want to hit an anniversary. I want to hit a five-year milestone for myself. Okay, cool. And then recently it's just like, okay, I just want to hit the fiftieth. So, <laughs> Getting too old for this. So the fiftieth is it for you, huh? That's where you're gonna hang it up. Yeah. Saying it here, uh, the countdown begins of yeah. the virus farewell tour. <laughs> <laughs> That makes and, me so sad, but I know, <laughs> I know that you have a life. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing is, is I don't get to go to any. I I really don't get to go to any and other that's, events. That's the yeah. thing that will actually let you free up to go to, to more. Yeah, like now. last, like last night, me and a, me and a crew, we went out to uh, Reign of Terror. Hey, I was there last night too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, what time did you get there? We got there like right when it opened. I was there. Where? I was there. I I I was there around. I got there about six six thirty. Okay, we we got in line around like six fifty, and yeah. Okay, by that time I probably was already inside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was I mean, I was terrified. That shit terrified me. Oh like, my god! It's one thing to go through a maze and you already know you're gonna get scared from like jump scares and stuff. But when you take but away your vision, vision, it's just like, you don't know what they have props in there that look real. And I could have and, sworn one of the clowns before you go into the big clown room was turning its head towards me. Yeah, I was like, no, bro. <laughs> no. OK, you think that's bad. Just the fact that it's here's a glow stick yeah. and you're at the back of the group. Oh, you're at the back of the group and you're walking through this and you just so happen to turn around and there's nothing but darkness yeah, behind you. No, that was me last night. That was me. Oh, that was, yeah, I, 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 was like, oh my God. <laughs> Sammy, I would have loved to see your reaction on this one. Yeah. Well, I, I went in 2018 and there was lights on and I was scared. So no lights. Mm. Heck no. And you thought... <laughs> And, and the first thing that came to mind when we told the lady when we got into her, like, our both of our balance isn't the best. She's like, oh, trust me, the glow stick illuminates more than you think. And it did. I'll give it, it does. That. I was like, so, Sammy, I think you would have been okay, like, because it does illuminate more than you think it does. I'm over here thinking, like, we're going to have to fucking go all the way to the, like, put it to the wall like, to find it. Find the wall and go down the fucking wall. No, you can, you can, and, and it also helps that there's some, there's some strobe effects in there. Yeah. There's some like very, very ambient, ambient lighting in there. But like me and my friends got to the polka dot room yeah. and we were like, wait a minute, how dark is it really? And we covered the glow stick and we were just like, we can't <laughs> see anything. Uh, no, bring that sucker back out. Oh man. Those scare actors have had to also, big congratulations to those guys. I mean, those guys are pretty – they killed it. Mm -hmm. like, final night, man. Lights out. I mean, that must have been – I want to – now, is that something you'd be interested in doing maybe for a night, just like a lights out experience yeah. like that to scare? Yeah. I, I feel like you could have a ton of fun with that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> as hey, far as it I'm is. I'm saying if you're going to retire next year, that get frees up maybe a guest spot one night to do things like that. I would okay. I was thinking about it, and I said it to my friends. I was just like, I would love to see them do a night where get as many like 
HHN, us, and Six Flags. Especially get just for a, their midway through Halloween one. Just get a group of us. Yeah. And let us work it. Yeah. Like give their give their talent the day off. Yeah. And just have all of us in there. That'd be a lot of fun. I'd be <laughs> I would buy tickets. That place would be sold out and you know it. Oh my gosh. It would be wild. That was I'm not, that was a long experience too. It it's like thirty minutes. No, it feels longer with the lights out. <laughs> I kept looking you're... at my girlfriend. I was like, "When the fuck?" Are... I like, I told her, "I'm like, babe, I, I, I'm legit terrified right now. Like, I can't." <laughs> shit. And I, yeah, I, like you said, you don't know if someone's following behind you because when you turn around, it's just pitch black. And that's another big thing of me. I'm just like, if someone's behind me, I'm gonna fucking freak out like bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually don't get scared going through houses. I screamed a few times. No, I, got, I was terrified. <laughs> they were getting me left and right. Like there was, there was. Just, when you take away my vision, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Like, but I, well, I, I enjoyed the experience. That's how much I'd go back and do it again. Yeah. Was it worse than Phobia at Castle Dark? Because that thing was pitch no, black. It's, 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 for me, it was like with Reign of Terror. It was like they have those life-size statues. So you don't know if they're real or not. Like, because it's literally uh-huh. like you just see a shadow in the corner. You're like, is that person going to fucking pop out at me? And and the best part is, is they're actors. Well, just like um, I don't know if it, I don't know what scene we were in because it was my first time ever going through it. Oh, really? You gotta go with it with the lights too. You'll, it's really yeah. Decorative. I, I want to. I'm um, we're doing it in December. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going to the December one too. Um, whoever was sitting, whoever was just at the desk, like just stretched out. I'm like, it looks fake, but it could be real. I think it's fake. And then they scared us, and I'm like, I thought they were fake. <laughs> So I wish weird. I wish Knots would have extended Paranormal for one season and done that. And do a lights out, Ooh. lights out Paranormal. I really wish I would have. Now I would like to. Okay, so Story I'm going to bring up a topic that I have a feeling you guys have probably heard a lot about too. Bloodline this year. In specific to the guns. Get rid of them. <laughs> I will say Get rid this, of them. the gun system has come off hella confusing this year because there's three different slots for it. I don't think a lot of people pay attention to that. Yeah. And, and there's like a final score at the end, and I'm just like, none of this makes sense. Like, I, I don't. But I, I think, yeah, that gun, that maze with, I liked it with guns because I'm a sucker for gun mazes. But yeah, that maze can be you go its own without guns. Okay. Let's say it wasn't the final season of Dark Entities. Because I think it is. Please tell me um, you're gonna say what I think you're about to fucking say. Probably. Because I've said it many times. We've advocated it many times on this. Show. We 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 stay saying this. If if this is what yeah. you're going to say, it's have your have your pre-show for Dark Entities as listen up, recruits. Here is the last here is the last transmission we received from whatever the such and such thing is. You are the rescue party. Investigate and find out what happened. If anything is rescue the survivors, and if there's anything aboard, shoot to kill. Go. And you go through with the guns as the rescue party. And I'm living out my alien fantasy right now. Exactly. I see I we've just said put the guns there. You said, hey, here's the story. <laughs> put the guns. <laughs> we, were like, we were like, let's just let's put guns in dark entities. It'd be cool. The virus came in. Here's the fucking story right here. And I'm like, <laughs> I think we're on the same page now. Let's yes. Get it going. Yes. <laughs> Not yeah, because it doesn't have a line. Give it a line, Not please. Fair. It's a good maze. Hire, if you want to hire the three of us to write this script out for you, by all means, we will do so. No problem. Just give yeah, because for the season, that's all I have. Because that's because, and the funny thing is, is I know several people who just like they took the gun and then just held it down the entire time just so they could walk through and enjoy the maze. Yeah, it was just a clusterfuck for me to try to film too. Like I'm, I'm over here. Like, okay, how do I? How am I gonna do this? Trying to do a first person thing. I ended up putting up two POVs. Like one was a more first person. One was kind of like a POV. But it's yeah, no guns. We don't need them. Yeah, I think to um. Now this is a tricky one. I want your thoughts on this too. Um, with grimoire, like mm-hmm. I think the opening pre. Um, like the little pre scene that they do in their opening, it's yeah. good and it's actually relevant to the story. I just I think it needs to be cut because of line purposes. 
because that was another one that was always it gets it gets a little lost. Um, I think it would have been cool had the um, the old Mystery Lodge showroom right. in entry building that could have been the whole grimoire grimoire da, 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 words 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 yeah. um, that could have been that camp scene. And then you go into the maze. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one, a lot of people that I talked to about it didn't understand it. Right. And I think that's because it was two things. One, it's tied to origins yep. that people don't notice. Yep. And two, um, it's very tied to um, the show from last year. Yeah. Futuronics. Uh-huh. Yeah. And some people didn't even didn't even know about the show. So they went through the maze just like, I don't get it. Yeah, we didn't see the show. I so... didn't see the show. And my assumption with the maze, what what spoke to me about the maze for this one is this book is the witch's book, obviously. And <laughs> the fiftieth is coming next year. So this is setting up kind of like the renewal of that book again. Cause we haven't seen the witch as an icon since 2019 and the witch obviously was kind of like the key icon for the entire event in 2019 with origins the maze the hanging mm-hmm. show and the whole overall ghost town the, you know the lady. opening too yeah the opening yeah. ceremony you know and the last couple of years it's been the train conductor which is yeah. another noticeable icon that is a really cool one too and i think for the 50th it's only right to bring back the witch therefore grimoire is giving you the update as to where the book's gone over the decades leading up to the yeah. That's that's how I interpreted it. But yeah. There's probably a little bit of everything in that maze. But I mean I I have to say the energy this season. I mean, you look at 2021 that was our like, you know, come back from COVID year, but there were still people that were a few kind of like a little skeptical <laughs> about coming back. This year it was like fuck it, we're going to go out and just have we're going to go out and just have fun again. Like, that's exactly yeah. what we're doing. Like, how was the energy going in uh, opening night to where it was by the end of this, the run? Um, For me, at least, our energy, my energy was just like, okay, we're back. Business as usual. Cool. Um, From the guests, it was just like, okay, last year was kind of a test to see how well we could do this in the midst of a pandemic. This year was, okay, we're in an endemic, still pandemic going on, but not as bad. Yeah. But we can have more fun with it. And so it was just like, let's go out there and have some fun with it. I saw it every single night I went. Every single night I went. Yeah, the... It was a... Okay, the two Nazis' two new policies were interesting for the event this season. Okay, chaperone policy was like, I- I'll tell you from I'll tell you both policies from a guest point of view, and then I want to yeah. hear from your point of view. Chaperone policy for me was a blessing and a curse at the same time. It was a blessing because I can take my time actually going through a maze this time and film a decent walkthrough get some details that I never usually can because I'm always in a rush going through it. A curse because a lot of the times when I get scared zone footage, it's best to get it when the streets are a little bit more crowded. So the footage is focusing more on the scares and and what people do rather than just them walking around, which is cool to have as aesthetic footage and whatnot. But you want to get the ones with the scares because those are the ones that are a lot of fun and and people can look back and and laugh about and stuff. Um, So that's why it was a blessing and a curse for me. Now, the bag policy was just bullshit. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry, Nas. Like, I, love, I love Scary Farm and stuff, but, like, come on, Nas. Like, I understand you guys probably have issues with people bringing stuff into the event and whatnot. But do a thorough security check, and th- th- there's, not, there's not that issue. Yeah. Um, for us, the, the chaperone policy almost in some days seem non-existent um but other days you could tell just because we'd be wandering around it's just like okay it's not i don't see a bunch of children wandering around annoying me (laughs) but other days you'd be like 
I'd walk around. I'm like, where is your guardian? Where is your chaperone? <laughs> um, the bag policy was a little, f- f- and this is from the buffet standpoint, rough. Really? Yes. We had. Um, I remember. I remember this one very well, just because of how it happened. We had a group of seven coming in. They were a little late. Um, I think they got in there probably about 6.30, It's a group of seven, but there's only a group of five at the table. The other two, mind you, this family Ubered to the event. Of course they did. Because I think they were staying in a hotel probably closer to Disney by the sound of it. Okay. Two people had bags that did not fit Knox's policy. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mind you, did you see the bags that Knox was selling that supposedly were supposed to fit the policy, and they didn't fit said policy, and that's a little embarrassing on a company standpoint? Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. Um, you can walk in you can walk through security, not have a bag, go into the park and buy a bag that does not even fit the policy. Yeah. That's, that's a little sketchy. Yeah. Um, and then just the fact that the dim- it, my, I think my biggest problem were the dimensions of the bag. Yes. They were unrealistic. Yeah. I get it. And the thing like, is... It was like, this is it. Yeah. This is it. This is like, oh my, that's the size of my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was weird because um, my parents went and my parents like to come, come with every year. And it was, and after like my day off was like middle of mi- middle of the run on a Friday of all days. Um, and so we thought about it and we're like, well, I've seen people with like the fanny packs, right? Fanny packs were allowed in. But I don't think fanny packs fit their dimensions. You know what? I think, yeah, because um, I remember going to the event with a few people, and I, I had brought a fanny pack in the beginning of the run, and they were wondering how I got it in because they said that their friends were getting shit for it in the beginning. So I was like, All right, they just let me walk in, and, and you can't miss me. I'm like one of the tallest motherfuckers coming in. True. It's like, <laughs> so if they're gonna if they're going to notice me, they're going to notice me and call me out on it, so... Huh. Yeah, I think I think the upsetting part is there was like a little bit of like the security was like if you one security guard be like, oh that's fine, then another one might be, well, this actually doesn't fit the dimension. So I think uh, but, from, like a guest perspective, it, it wasn't like there it was wasn't consistent. Concrete, it wasn't a concrete answer. And because the bag was so small, you were like, Well, if it's with it, like if it's near the parameters, it, it flies. But some people were like, No, it doesn't meet parameters, so it doesn't fly. So it's like Yeah. It was it was weird. All types of weird. Yeah. And I get it. Believe me, I get it. But it's just one of those. I don't know. They're like. I, I don't know. Because there's no real way to solve that as a problem. Yeah, I just think it needed to be a slightly bigger bag. Because mm-hmm. it just it, it, it didn't work. Because a, a woman couldn't really bring in a, a, a small purse and. You know, some uh, women uh, Dude, may like, need feminine my products. Had during... to order a special bag just for the event, like a custom, like she. But it was something that she's going to end up using in the future because she got it in the, you know, the way she wanted it in a way. So, okay. But, but still, I mean, like, it goes to show what lengths people were trying to go through just to make the dimensions so they could bring a bag in, like. Right, and and I agree. I've seen. I saw a few people at the buffet, and they were just like, and I look at the bag, and I'm like. How did you get this through security? Yeah. My favorite joke in all this whole bag policy is me walking around the buffet with my giant um, doctor's bag. And people are like, how were you able to get that in? And I'm just like, practice? Practice? (laughs) (laughs) Practice? Yeah, someone literally was just like upset that I had my doctor's bag in the buffet. Because <laughs> you got more bag space than you do, right? You really put anything in there, man. Yeah, 
Uh, another thing I'm curious here, Virus, is how has your scaring changed since when you first started to the way that you scare now? I don't use my voice as much, surprisingly. I don't use my voice as much. <laughs> yes, I use most of the Thunder Jug now. That's always fun. Because originally, um, like years ago, I w- oh wow, I would even say easily 10 years ago, I'd be out there using my voice like it was nobody's business. And there was a day where I had to go into Disney, like a Monday where I had to go into Disney and I had no voice. Oh no. I was like, hi, I'm here. I'm I'm here for work. And they looked at me like, yeah, we can't have you working. Go home. I'm like, (laughs) okay. And I'm like, okay. As I'm trying to talk, I had no voice. And that was when I was just like, I need, I need something that can be loud but fit the character so i was like i'm a doctor and i thought about my bag and i was like i can use a thunder jug and surprisingly i did actually try putting like when i first got my thunder jug i did try putting it into the doctor's bag but that didn't work too well the sound was just so muffled it was like okay yeah that's not gonna work (laughs) So I just have fun. I have Thunder Jug, which is the doctor's bag that I'm carrying from the buffet. Okay, <laughs> just uh, it's that, a, you got the spooky version coming out after seven. Yes. Yeah. Spooky yeah. What uh, what what made you decide to, to create a character that was a doctor? Um, a lot of trial and error, actually. Um, because when I was trying to figure out what do I want to do, what I want, where do I want to take this character, um. I originally thought about being a tailor and I was running around with a tape measure. I'm like, "Eh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it at all. So the bag you guys know um, from the buffet was my makeup kit bag that I did, um, that I used in college. I, at that point, I already finished doing makeup or I already finished um, school. So I just took out the makeup trays and just had the bag and i was like this could actually pass for a doctor's bag and i was like okay i want to try being a doctor and supply wise i had the i had the bag and i went through several different props i went through syringes i went through knives and eventually found the saw the knife the knife would have been fun, but the problem was anytime I like wielded it, it was one of those rubbery ones. It was like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not scary. That's just me. Just like, I needed like a hard plastic, which I never did find, but I need it to be like within a certain dimension from myself mentally. Don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I was just like, I need some, I need something I can wield at people. And I went into I went into um, Halloween Club one year, and all of a sudden I came across the that the hacksaw, and I was just like, a doctor from that time period would have a saw to cut off someone's limbs. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try it, and I was like, okay, yeah, I like the feel of it. It's lightweight. It's plastic, but it's a very, very hard plastic. (laughs) And it got to a point where I've gotten stupidly good at wielding it that I'll just go walking down the street now and I'll just pop it right in front of someone's face and pull it back. (laughs) I (laughs) I noticed that. Bam! It's like a freaking quick reaction. I'm just like, you almost got Uh the face. Yeah. Um, And it's 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 really interesting because I've been noticing it the past few years where people don't know their tools. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. It's I mean, oh, come on, the, it, the same people that are on their phones at a buffet. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, it's a wrench. <laughs> I don't remember a wrench cutting anything. Exactly. It's like, and I I get it because it's got that weird little rectangular corner on the top yeah. but even then if you actually look at it you know that's not a wrench not it's far from a wrench actually Very yeah far. complete opposite end man i mean 
a legacy for you that's gone, say, about 20 years now, you, you said? Like 20 yeah. Years year, huh? This year was 21. 21. <laughs> 21 years, man. And and the 50th is where where it's going to be hung up for you. So if you could tell yourself anything, you, your past self, something that you know now, what would you go back and tell your past self? Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, man. You made it this far. You're gonna go. You're gonna make it to the fiftieth, and <laughs> that's that's it, man. I mean, dude, congratulations on on that span of a career. I mean, that that's that's impressive to to for you to keep going that long. There's not many of us at like a twenty year mark. Yeah. There's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not only hitting 20, but doing 20 at a, a high mark. Uh, based on my research, last year you did win Monster of the Year for Ghost Town. Yeah. So obviously you're doing something right, even into year 21. <laughs> I don't know. It was okay. So 21 got really, was really interesting. And I was just, I was just doing my thing and I'm doing my thing like, like normal. And I had a lot of other people coming up to me that season. It's like, oh, you're doing amazing, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, what? what's going on? What are you all plotting? And I'm sitting back, and it gets to a point where, where we get to the um, banquet. And people are like, yeah, you've got Monster there. I'm like, oh, no, I don't. And I'm like, no, it's probably that person over there. Because there was one other person, and I hope they get. I hope this particular person does get Monster of the Year because they deserve it. Um, I was like, no, I don't see myself getting it. I don't know, but something tells me I am getting it just because everybody's been commenting on me this okay. this season. And when I won it, I was just like, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that. W- I will say it was unexpected for me. I was I was just like I was just out just doing my thing. That's all. Let me vibe, man. Just vibe out with it. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, but yeah. It's I mean, dude, going into the fiftieth next year, man. I mean, what can we expect from from can we can we expect virus on his absolute worst behavior next year? Oh, always, <laughs> always. Oh, and it's even gonna be like. I feel like that last week and just like, hey, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, that <laughs> last, uh, heaven help the person who gets that last scare. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Now I got to be there that, that closing night. I, have to, I just have to do it. Yeah, one of the things I was kind of hoping for would be for um, Hostel to still be around and he'd kill the doctor. Uh, Did you see Clown Hostel? Yeah. Isn't that some shit? That was that was a little that was like ooh. Was that's, like, mm. It works so well. <laughs> it does. It really does. And I was like, I know this is an Easter egg and whatnot, but this works so well. Uh-huh. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, if if there were was there any other like at, at your time working at Not Scare Film, was there anywhere else scare zone wise that you wanted to play in for like a night or something? Um I feel like you could fit in a lot of good zones. I had toyed around with camp for a bit. Um, I would say, yeah, camp. Just at least just for a night or whatever it becomes. Because rumor, have you heard the rumor? Is there going to be a... Rumor is Hollow is gone and there's going to be a new scare zone. How much truth there is into that, I'm not sure. I think they but, market. I think they marketed it as its last season. I think so too, because yeah, I remember. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm very interested in seeing what becomes of that. Oof. Same. Should be, but I hope something good. I'm hoping it's something of the past coming back, because that would be that would be quite legendary. Yeah. yeah. One thing I would love, <laughs> not hint, hint, nudge, nudge. We need a maze in that back corner over there. Yeah. Just something. Because when I, 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 I got to come through twice as a guest. And when I did, I noticed camp did not have a lot of foot traffic. Nope. 
because there's no reason to go over there. Well, there's, yeah, because you know it, what? It, it's like uh, the same thing with Fiesta Village. Like, I'm hoping after they remodel it and everything, this is the opportunity to throw a freaking scare zone that. That way, you get foot traffic going through. It. Yeah, it needs it needs it. Yeah, it's like an Urban Legends one or something. Ooh, be fun. You could do like a, you know your Hispanic heritage you know, Urban Legend. Be a lot of fun, man. I hear mm-hmm. my like, crying from a distance. I'd be like, oh damn. By the Forsaken Lake, that's her whole area right there. Ooh, yeah. that one out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is, it, is it time for the the, the most important question? Uh-oh. Most important. The, the hardest question of all time? Uh, the hardest question of all time, the most important question. All right, here we go. We're going to judge you based upon whatever your answer is here, Virus. Oh, great. What is your favorite scary movie? I knew this was the toughest question. Yeah. <laughs> Put on the spot. Thinking about it. Uh, can I give a franchise? Sure, sure. We, we'll okay. accept franchises. Okay, that narrows it down to two. Oh, yeah, we can go with both. It's okay. It's not, it's not that. Um, it's not that. Nightmare, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, original, and Scream. Scream. Let's go. Yeah. All righty. Virus, thank you so much for uh, finally getting the oppor- giving us the opportunity to share a little bit of your story and whatnot. That's been well overdue, and we're, we're so happy that we got to finally do a, a show with you, man, because the, the minute you asked me opening night when we were doing it, I was like, he's still interested. I'm like, yes, yes. So <laughs> I have been for a while. Yes, I'm like, okay, let's do it. And the stars finally aligned for us, and we fucking finally did this. I'm so excited. Um I am a little sad to find out that next year will be your your final year, but hey, I'm excited that you'll be able to also go visit other haunts after after next year. So that should be yeah. a lot of fun for you. Well, you know, it's not only me. It's it's, it's, it's gonna fifty one is gonna be interesting. <laughs> yes, it yeah. will. Fifty one will be interesting to be like, all right, here's all these people that are hanging it up on their own accord. Yep. Uh huh. Who's it, now? Who's the new talent to come up? Who's the yeah dance? yeah. It's it's almost going to I feel like the 51st is going to be very reminiscent of 09. Huh. Cuz in 09 is when they did the auditions. And wow. that wiped out a bunch of street talent. Wow. So yeah, that's it's going to be interesting come the 51st. Let's see what happens. Now as for the buffet, um yeah, if you need some uh, hangouts, if you need someone to help out with that, I will gladly be around to consult. <laughs> <laughs> that means we gotta do the buffet next year a couple times. Oh well, that's uh, no question. No question. Just because it's gonna be the would, last time we see virus doing it. I would say, come, come, however many times you want, but come the very last day. Oh. Oh. Because that, I, I feel like that one's gonna be emotional. Yes, it will. Yeah. Well, I'll have to I'll have to plan my entire haunt calendar <laughs> to come in on the last day. Yep, <laughs> we're gonna do it. Well, virus, we absolutely appreciate the fuck out of you, man. You helped give us the um ultimate ghost town experience, man. And and every year it's a pleasure to watch you scare and and to hear you scream at people is 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 just joy to me because it's hilarious. Uh, thanks for the always amazing content that you uh you get for us for compilations that we share with the world and and tiktok and whatnot because you come up with some of the funniest things ever and i don't know how you do it but you you just keep doing it because it's working for you man i i appreciate it the entire fan base appreciates it now the countdown to the farewell tour begins right now we got a whole year ahead of us so Let's get going, man. This is gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be a big one. So thank you so much. And uh Sammy, why don't you close us out for today? 
Yeah, once again, thank you, Virus. Thank you for uh, taking people's ACLs, MCLs, PCLs, and every other part of their body. Um, <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, go hit that subscribe button um, or, and turn your bell notifications on because we've got a few more weeks of Scare Appreciation Month, um, and we are, we're doing our best to get the best and brightest out there, like Virus. Um, in addition, go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Knights of Horror and on Instagram at The Knights of Horror. Last but certainly not least, go check out our clips on TikTok at The Knights of Horror and go get uh, Virus's clip up to 100,000 because that'll be amazing if we can. Oh, yeah. With, that, <laughs> with all that being said, we love each and every one of you. And we'll see you guys uh, in the fog real soon. Sooner than you may think. Peace. Laters. <laughs>